Thank you so much for inviting me, um, giving me the opportunity to present my work. Um, I did this work about a little over a year ago, and I learned a lot during the process. And I'd like to share this experience with all of you. Before I start, I disclose that I have a research grant from International Nat Council Research and Education Foundation. But the founder has no role in any aspect of the study um, because we are protected by the institution and uh, uh, the founder has no uh, uh, say in the data analysis or interpretation. So when we talk about nuts, we usually refer to tree nuts and peanuts. Uh, but technically, peanuts is not, uh, are not nuts. They are legumes. But because their nutritional profile are very similar, uh, in most of the studies, they were grouped together. And in at most of the FFQs, they were asked as one question. In the, in the US, the top three uh, tree nuts consumed are almonds, walnuts, and pistachios. Um, hazelnuts is also very popular in Europe. And actually, in the Predimat that I mentioned in the morning, they randomized a mix of nuts, and they, uh, they include uh, almonds, uh, walnuts, and hazelnuts. So nuts uh, have always been uh, very special in nutritional research because nuts are rich in all kinds of bioactive uh, com com compounds and nutrients. And it was, uh, nuts are rich in uh, unsaturated fatty acids, all kinds of minerals, vitamins, polyphenols, and other phytochemicals. And a lot of small clinical trials have shown that nuts have uh, beneficial effects. Uh, these components, for example, unsaturated fatty acids, have uh, a, a great effect on lowering the cholesterol level. And one of the um, famous study, done by Dr. Sabetti here, um, is uh, he basically did a meta-analysis of these 25 feeding trials on nuts and uh, cholesterol. Uh, uh, lipids, blood lipids, um, uh, and then uh, the, he, 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 as you can see here, there's a dose response relationship between nuts and the level, blood level of lipids. The more nuts you cons one consume, the, the uh, more reduction that we observe in the uh, blood lipids, uh, with blood lipids. And other uh, um, p potential mechanisms include uh, uh, all these uh, different uh, minerals, uh, antioxidants in nuts have effects on lowering the uh, reduced uh, inflammation, oxidative stress, and uh, they also reduce insulin resistance in some studies. And these mechanisms play an uh, important role in most of the uh, chronic diseases, uh, for example, hypertension um, and uh, uh, hypoglycemia and diabetes and some, in some cases, cancer. So uh, with all this, oh, actually, um, some studies also show that uh, nuts have an effect on, uh, on the re reduced obesity. Um, and one, this, uh, one of the studies done in nurses and health professionals uh, at Harvard is uh, basically they look at the association between nut consumption over 30 years and um, the weight change over 30 years, and they observed the uh, in, uh, strong inverse association with nuts. So the more nut you observe, actually you lose more weight, which is uh, contrary to the common perception. So with all these benefits, uh, with different components in nuts, and also the, based on the small clinical trials um, uh, on the uh, nuts and the biomarkers, we hypothesize that the uh, long-term regular nut consumption have a beneficial effect on, uh, well, have, is associated with reduced total mortality and reduced mortality due to heart disease. And so we use the uh, nurses' health study and health professional follow-up study, and these are well-known, well-established studies. They are prospective, uh, so we can establish the temporal relationship 
uh, they have large sample size. Um, they are actually uh, one of the largest cohorts in the world. And, and they, uh, particularly in dietary analysis, these cohorts have uh, great uh, strengths because they measure the dietary intake every, four, every two to four years. This repeated measurement is crucial for dietary analysis because we, we are more interested in, in the long-term consumption. And long-term consumption is more relevant to the disease outcome. And also in these studies, we, uh, we, were, we were able to separate uh, peanuts from tree nuts, uh, which is not very, very common uh, among all the other uh, cohort studies. And as, like I said, every two to four years, we send questionnaires to the participants, ask about their dietary and lifestyle factors. And uh, they, uh, we did a small uh, uh, validation study and show uh, the FFQ, uh, even the baseline FFQ works uh, fairly well. And for the outcome, we also uh, uh, have a validation study show the outcome assessment is, uh, 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 is accurate. And also, uh, we, we collected all this uh, covariate information over 30 years, uh, including uh, the basic uh, uh, geographic information and also uh, some, some of the factors uh, are not very commonly asked in other cohort studies, for example, physical exam and family history of all kinds of disease, uh, diseases such as diabetes, uh, cancer, and heart disease, and a, a lot of uh, detailed uh, assessment uh, on a variety of covariates. Um, this is also important because uh, with all the dietary factors, it, um, uh, people also, oh, always have doubts on yeah, epidemiologic studies because, uh, because of confounding by, by all these variables. So have all this avail uh, information available is very important. So we, later on, we can do all kinds of analysis to try to uh, assess the, uh, uh, to do uh, sensitivity analysis to, to assess the robustness of our estimate. And we also did some baseline exclusions. And after exclusion, we have around 120,000 people in the study. And this is a baseline uh, uh, population characteristics. And as you can see here, people who consume more nuts are um, more, have, have healthier lifestyles. They are less likely to be smokers, and they exercise more. They consume more fruits and vegetables, uh, but they also drink more. Um, but uh, fortunately, we have collected all this information so we can adjust for them later on. And this is uh, uh, one of the uh, main analysis. So for, for the whole nut analysis, we see a, a strong inverse association between nut consumption and total mortality. And this inverse association is primarily driven by cardiovascular disease, particularly heart disease. And as you can see, oh, as you can see here, um, so for, for those who consume nuts more than five times per week, uh, we observed a 29% uh, reduction in, uh, in, cardiac uh, in heart disease over 30 years. And, uh, but for stroke, uh, we actually didn't see any association. Overall, for cardiovascular disease, we, we, see, uh, we saw 25% reduction over 30 years. And this, uh, this analysis when we uh, separate uh, peanuts from tree nuts. And as you can see here, uh, for, uh, we, we, for, for example, heart disease, we see similar effects uh, between peanuts and tree nuts here as well. Women, this man, women and this man, and this is combined. And um, uh, this is a total mortality, and this is heart disease. And, you, and it, it, it's very obvious that these associations are primarily driven by heart disease. Uh, the confidence intervals are very uh, narrow, and, uh, um, and the, uh, the, the association is, uh, is very strong. Uh, inverse association is pretty strong. And this is analysis that, uh, sensitivity analysis that I just talked about. So basically, we look at this association in different subgroups by age, by uh, BMI, physical activity, and all these variables that I, uh, I just mentioned. Um, 
physical exam. So it doesn't matter whether uh, what your BMI is or whether you exercise more on or not. Um, not uh, have uh, this uh, inverse association with total mortality, and if, this is true for heart disease as well. So, uh, and then we did this sensitivity analysis to exclude smokers and uh, people with extreme BMIs and exclude diabetics and uh, just for Mediterranean diet because uh, it's sometimes people always wonder whether it's dietary pattern or nuts. So we try to do the best we can. Uh, since we have this information that we further adjusted for Mediterranean diet and also because of the results from Predimed uh, study, we also adjusted also further adjusted for olive oil intake. And we also did this lag analysis, two year lag analysis, and none of this analysis have any impact on the results. So um, basically, our, uh, in this large cohort studies, nursing health study and health professional follow-up study, we observed this uh, inverse association between us and total mortality, and uh, uh, particularly heart disease. Um, we didn't observe a strong association with stroke. Uh, we, we, we tried every possible way to reduce confounding to address uh, all the uh, biases that, uh, po that that's possible to occur. But there's one, and we did a good job, and uh, it got published um, uh, very quickly. Um, but oh, there's one limitation that um, people always criticize nurses and health profession, those two cohorts. Uh, they always say, uh, your cohorts are um, primarily whites and uh, uh, with, uh, com comprised of people with higher social status because they are health professionals. And, and this uh, comments, we, it's, very, it's impossible for us to address. So we, uh, we definitely admit that we, uh, the, 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 uh, this generalizability is one of the limits that our study have. Uh, this study just published last month, um, May 5th, I think, and this study, is, they did exactly the same thing, even for the subgroup analysis, sensitivity analysis, they basically repeated our analysis by using different cohorts. So these two cohorts, uh, actually four cohorts, uh, three cohorts. So one, oh, the first one is the Southern Community Cohort Study, and they recruited people only from low, uh, with, with low <coughs> social status. And uh, this Shanghai study, uh, basically done in Asian, uh, Asia. Um, so, in, in, as you can see, the in this uh, in this uh, southern community cohort study with people with low uh, social status, they observed very similar uh, results as our study. So, for cardiovascular disease, they see uh, in, among African Americans, uh, they see about 23% reduction uh, in uh, in mortality. And uh, in uh, European descent, uh, uh, and then they see uh, probably 38% uh, uh, reduction. And then for heart disease, a stronger effect, uh, just like our results see more uh, reduction with heart disease. Um, and for stroke, um, both types, they didn't see, uh, even though they um, suggested inverse for uh, ischemic uh, stroke, but then the results are not significant. And uh, uh, but for for the uh, Shanghai cohorts, they observed strong, uh, so very similar results uh, as this uh, this cohort and our cohorts. And then for heart disease, stronger effect. Um, but they do see a significant uh, inverse association with stroke. But then the uh, estimates are only borderline significant. So uh, I think this, this study is very important. It's a great contribution to the field because um, obviously uh, uh, nurses and health professionals have a very large sample and well designed, but uh, uh, this study just uh, look at the association about, uh, uh, you know, in a different type of uh, uh, population and they make the story more complete, the big picture more complete. And the story, um, uh, it's, it's basically, uh, they, uh, it's, um, the associ inverse association between nuts and cardiovascular mortality are consistent across different type of uh, different racial groups, and uh, um, it's consistent uh, among uh, people with high or low uh, social status. So, to this date, um, there are ten studies, cohort studies, uh, on nuts and cardiovascular mortality. Earlier studies are smaller, uh, of shorter duration. Uh, later studies, oh, 
later studies um, are larger and uh, with a longer uh, follow-up uh, with nurses, uh, like 30 years, the longest uh, follow-up. And uh, um, you can see here the um, the, uh, the, the these studies uh, across U uh, U.S., Europe, and Asia. And uh, uh, except for nurses, um, the other studies use the baseline questionnaire, just one single questionnaire. But anyway, they got uh, similar results. Um, and uh, they, um, all these studies adjusted for age, gender, smoking, BMI, and physical activity, and some of the dietary factors. So uh, the, these studies are all uh, well conducted. So I did this meta-analysis um, a few weeks ago and just to see the uh, overall effect of uh, association between nuts and cardiovascular mortality. Uh, and you can see the, um, the association are uh, fairly consistent across these 10 studies. Um, and the summary estimate uh, is about 0.73. Uh, so it's, it's very uh, similar to what, what, uh, what we found and uh, what in, the, um, in, the, in that, uh, uh, the study that I just mentioned. And the, and the um, point estimates are consistent across different studies. And this, this analysis, uh, basically, I uh, omitted one study at one time just to see whether uh, the summary uh, estimate is uh, influenced by a single study. And uh, when I did this, um, and you see, it, it's basically deleting one study has absolutely very little effect on the summary estimate. And no matter which study you delete, um, the summary estimate, uh, the upper bound of confidence interval is still is less than 0.8. So um, it's just another way to show that the uh, results are very consistent across studies. And I did the same thing for, uh, for heart disease. Uh, and then uh, these 10 studies um, show very uh, consistent findings uh, regarding uh, nuts and uh, heart disease uh, mortality. And uh, uh, the summary estimate uh, is about 0.69. And I did the um, uh, sensitivity analysis as well. And similar findings, so uh, the, the, the result, overall results are not, is not influenced by any single study. And the, uh, no matter which study you delete, the upper bound is about 0.78, so very strong. Well, in terms of dietary analysis, uh, this should, consider, should be considered a very strong association, immersive association. Um, but uh, let's look at stroke. So there are uh, the, uh, six, uh, well, should be five studies uh, looked at stroke. Um, so um, it's compared to heart, cardiovascular disease and heart disease, uh, the results are less consistent. You can see some in one study uh, in this one type of stroke has actually increased the risk. Um, but the summary estimate is still inverse. Uh, it looks inverse. The confidence interval is not as uh, narrow as before uh, because of the small sample size. And also, uh, it's much closer to one. And when I uh, did this sensitivity analysis, um, and you can, uh, it's obvious that the, the summary uh, estimate is highly influenced by the Shanghai cohorts, uh, just as I mentioned before. Uh, the, in the Shanghai cohorts, they, uh, they observed the uh, inverse association with stroke, but uh, uh, it's borderline significant. But if we delete this study from the uh, meta-analysis, the results are not, no longer significant. The upper bound of the confidence intervals is, is about 1.06. Uh, so, um, Basically, um, with, uh, for cardiovascular disease and heart disease, we can conclude with confidence that there's association, inverse association. But for stroke, I think the evidence is not as strong. And uh, if we do a meta-analysis, you can see only one study really uh, stand out, but the other study is um, inconclusive or inconsistent across studies. So for um, this is uh, just, uh, I always think that the, for epidemiologic studies, people always worry about uh, association, whether the association is causation.
but as epidemiologists, we do uh, the best we can based on the current uh, available evidence. And so I basically apply f the um, the uh, uh, nine-point heel criteria to to see whether the this observed association uh, is likely to be causal or not. So uh, let's say one by one. Um, in terms of strength of the association for dietary analysis, I think it's pretty uh, strong uh, for, for uh, cardiovascular disease and heart disease. For stroke, it's less strong, but also still inverse. Um, for cardiovascular disease and heart disease, uh, the results are very consistent across different studies. Um, but for stroke, uh, it's another story. Um, in terms of temporal uh, reality, uh, because all these 10 studies are prospective cohort studies, so uh, dietary measurement occurred before the outcome, so we don't have any uh, worry uh, in, in terms of uh, uh, which comes first. And uh, in terms of coherence, as I showed the subgroup analysis and also uh, uh, the, the Shanghai cohort, European cohort, and all show similar effect and different ratio groups, uh, different regions, and also because the biomarkers, I, uh, biomarker studies I mentioned before in the beginning, um, that nuts uh, and all the components have all this effect on, uh, on different kind of biomarkers in small clinical trials, uh, which uh, uh, shows the our finding and uh, the observation from the cohort studies is consistent with. Uh, uh, the biomarker studies also add evidence to the coherence, this criteria. Okay, uh, and then um, and all, all these associations have those response relations. Um, and then uh, uh, e even though it's not, not specific to cardiovascular disease, this is a weaker criteria and, and uh, because the biomarker studies has credible uh, biological mechanisms behind this association. Um, so if, if you judge by the nine-point criteria, uh, the, the, association, the, the association between nuts and cardiovascular disease, heart disease, are uh, fulfilled most of the uh, criteria, uh, except for the experiment uh, the part, because we don't, to this date, we don't have a clinical trial uh, on nuts and the heart, uh, heart disease, the heart clinical outcome, because those studies will be very time consuming and expensive. Um, but then we have Predimed, uh, even though it combined um, Mediterranean diet with nuts, but still uh, it lends some uh, evidence to the, immers uh, to the uh, uh, causal uh, effect <coughs> for nuts, um, even, though, even though it's combined with Mediterranean diet. So uh, in conclusion, um, all this, with all this evidence, we can conclude with confidence that nuts, nut consumption uh, is associated with uh, reduced uh, total mortality, cardiovascular disease mortality, especially for heart disease mortality. Um, but the evidence for stroke is less consistent, um, but suggestive. Thank you.